Hi everybody. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to find the vector equation and the Cartesian equation of a line. Let's say we have this line. We want to find the vector equation of this. So we can work out the 3D coordinates of any point that lies on this line. To do this, we need two things. We need to know a point that lies on the line that originates from the origin. We need to know a position vector, which we'll call A. And we need to know the direction of a line. This would be a direction vector that runs parallel to the line. We'll call this B. So A would be the position vector of a point that lies on the line. And B is a direction vector that runs parallel to the line. And using these two, we can find the position of any point that lies on the line. Say, for instance, we choose this point here, and we'll call this R. Then to get to this point from the origin, we need to go from the origin to A. And then to get from A to R, we need to add multiple amounts of our direction vector. So in this case, we'll have to add two and a half lots of B. But say, for instance, we want to get to this point. Well, we'll go from the origin to A, and then we'll add a negative B. So this means that the equation of a line to get to any point on the line R, this would be the position vector A, plus a multiple, which we call lambda, lots of the direction vector. And this is the vector equation of a line, where A, is the position vector from the origin, and B is the direction vector that runs parallel to the line, okay? So we're going to use this equation to find the vector equation of a line passing through the points with these two position vectors. So if I sketch this as a diagram, we've got the two points on the line where neither position vectors originating from the origin. So we know the equation will be R, when this is the position of any point on the line, will equal A, its position vector. So for A, I could use either of these two points because they both lie on the line. I'm going to choose this one, plus lambda, lots of the direction vector. And I can work out the direction vector by finding the vector from here to here. So I'll label this point as point P, and this one as point Q. So the direction vector will be P to Q. And I can work this out because I'm trying to go from P to Q and I can do that by going via the origin. So this would be P to O plus O to Q. But we've been given O to P, not P to O. So I can change this as O to Q and this would become a negative so minus O to P. Well, we have O to Q here, and we've got O to P here. So P to Q will be O to Q minus O to P. Then I can work these out by adding the X, Y, and the Z component separately. So we get the 4, take away the negative 7, which will be 11. Negative 9, take away the 2, so negative 11 and negative two take away the negative five. So negative two plus five becomes positive three. And this P to Q then would be our direction vector, which is this B term. And we can substitute this back into our equation of a line. So this would be the equation of a line passing between these two points, okay? In our next example, we're going to look at a different form for the equation of a line. Okay, so now we've been asked to work out the Cartesian equation of a line using the fact that we've got a position vector given here and a direction vector given here. So we know that any general point R will be the position vector plus lambda lots of the direction vector. We know that A1 plus lambda B1 will give us our X coordinate, A2 plus lambda B2 our Y, and A3 plus lambda B3 our Z. 
and we can write these as three separate equations. Our x value will be a1 plus, and then multiplying this out, lambda b1. y will be equal to a2 plus, multiplying this out, lambda b2. And our z point will be a3 plus lambda b3. But this lambda is constant for the x, y, and z values. So we can make lambda the subject of each of these equations. So if we look at our x point, we'll move a negative a1 to the left hand side and divide by b1. Similarly for the y value, we'll take away the a2 from both sides and divide by b2. And we'll do the same for our z value. So the Cartesian equation number line comes from equating each of these three terms together because we know that they're all equal to each other. So it is this which forms the Cartesian equation of a line. And in this example, we've been asked to give the Cartesian equation of a line with this vector equation. So we know that this is our position vector and this is our direction vector. And these are our a values and these are our b values. So a1 will equal 0, a2 will equal 1, and a3 will equal negative 2. b1 will equal this 3, b2 will be the negative 2, and b3 will be the positive 4. And then we can substitute each of these values into our Cartesian equation on the line. And then we can tidy this up. We can get rid of this negative zero and we can have an addition here. And this is a perfectly valid Cartesian equation of a line. We could also multiply this by negative one to make this negative two into a positive. So this would be an equivalent equation of a line. Okay. Let's try another example. Okay, so we've got the two equations for a line, the vector equation in this form and the Cartesian equation in this form, we've been asked to establish whether the point 2, 3, 1 lies on this line. So we're using a vector equation. So we know for the point 2, 3, 1, x is 2, y is 3, and z is 1. And we can find our x, y, and z values from our equation. x will equal negative 4 plus 3 lambda, y will equal 1 plus lambda, and z will equal 3 minus the lambda. Then we can substitute these three values into here. And if this point does lie on the line, then we'll get the same lambda when we solve each of these three equations. So for our x coordinate, we'll move a negative 4 over to here and divide by 3. Lambda will be equal to 2. For our y coordinate, we'll move a 1 over. Again, we get 2. And for our z coordinate, we know 3 take away 2 does make 1. So we'll say the point 2, 3, 1 does lie on the line as lambda is consistent for x, y, and z. Okay? Let's try one more question. Okay, so finally, we've been asked to establish whether the point 4, 0, negative 2 lies on this line. So perhaps you want to try this question yourself. You can pause the video, and when you come back, we'll go through the work solution. Okay, so welcome back if you had a go. So we know x is 4, we'll substitute that into here. We know y is 0, we'll substitute that into here. And we know z is negative 2, so we'll put that into here. And then if the point does lie on the line, each of these three will be equal to each other. We've got negative 2 divided by negative 1. We've got 2 divided by 1, and we've got 6 divided by 3. So we'll say 4, 0, negative 2 does lie on the line, as lambda is again consistent for x, y, and z. Okay? Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that useful. If you did find that helpful, please like and subscribe, and you can download the full lesson from my website, mrmathematics.com.